Hey guys, I wanted to try to do a quick video on the legendary battle today because we're leaving for my birthday. Me and I are going to Disneyland for a couple days. Before we go, if I can just do a non-fancy talking video. Alright, first let me start with the trailer, the promo for the legendary battle. That kind of really annoyed me. <laughs> it says something like, To defeat evil once and for all, they'll need the greatest power ever. Him. And then they zoom into Tommy as if He's like the only ranger there, and there's not like over a hundred other rangers standing behind him. We all love Tommy. He was a great, awesome ranger. Green ranger is awesome. White ranger is cool. He was Red Zeo, Red Turbo. He came back in Wild Force. He was in Dino Thunder. He's back now. But, I mean, really, there are a lot of other awesome rangers. So I, I think that's just kind of lame to act like he's the greatest ranger ever when you have a shot that has every ranger in it, or almost every ranger at least. All right, I won't get sucked into that rant. You guys know what I'm saying. So the episode pretty much continues from last week. The Armada has invaded and they're firing on the city. And we start to see the cameos. Dana and Carter come and help some people. That was really cool that they had the Lightspeed jackets on. And I'm kind of trying to decide if it was cool that they got to keep them and brought them back, or if it would have been kind of cooler if wardrobe had been able to reproduce them. Like, what if the actors didn't actually have their their uniforms? And I wonder what they would have been wearing. I think it's really fantastic that they had those jackets, but anyway, that's doesn't really matter. Um, actually, maybe it's good that they that they were able to bring some of their own wardrobe, because somebody let Dana wear high heels to a rescue. Anyway, moving on. Leo, the Red Galaxy Ranger, was back on Earth, and he came to the rescue as well. He helped a little kid get his dog back, and the kid's name was Danny. Leo, of course, liked the name, because the actor who plays Leo is named Danny. And I thought it was kind of cool that they did that, but at the same time, should it have been a name that was from the series rather than an actor's name? I don't know. Seems like the kid could have been named Mike or Leo or something. All right, Tommy saves a little boy from the backseat of a car. Where was the kid's parents? <laughs> what happened to the parents? Those are some bad parents. I mean, was the kid just in the back seat when the car went over the bridge thing? And I just don't understand how that situation came to be. I mean, I get that they wanted to put a kid in danger and have Tommy save the day, but how did that happen that the parents either weren't there to begin with or weren't running after the kid trying to find him? And they, they never did show up. Bad parenting or bad writing, one of those. So Tommy jumps down from I don't know where onto the hood and he hands the boy Saba uh, so he can, you know, come out of the car. Now, why was Tommy... Tommy had like a white shirt, he had Saba, the helmet was superimposed over his head, you know, that kind of flashes on and goes pew, pew, you know, to show he's the white ranger. But in the Legend War, he was the green ranger. Pick one, I think. Either explain it or pick one. As I go on thinking about these things, I'm somewhat in the middle. Like, I could kind of argue, on one hand, I get that Saban wants to represent all these different things, and it's cool that we got Saba in there and got to see White Ranger. But on the other, I mean, do we really need more plot holes? A really simple explanation, not like Gosei's explanation, like a real one, could have kind of made it so. So then you're just like, oh, awesome, he's got Saba, rather than being like, where did Saba come from? Especially when he's unmorphed. Was he able to call Saba when he wasn't morphed? Was Tommy always morphed when he called Saba? I think so. I do like continuity. I'll come back to that. Speaking of continuity, it was great to see Melody Perkins. We all love her. However, I'm pretty sure that it should have been Kendrick's. I'm sure some people would like to argue about that because we know what happened to Kendrick's, but in Trakina's Revenge, it was Kendrick's that had the pink Lost Galaxy Ranger powers. That should have been Kendrick's. We did not see Gosei in this episode. Uh, he told the Rangers that he has faith in them or in their abilities or whatever, but is that really as helpful as he could have been? I don't know. Orion came back and he crash landed again. The Rangers go to confront the ship and they're like in fighting stance and then they're kind of surprised to see Orion. Isn't both his ship and flying style somewhat recognizable? Seems like one of them might have guessed it could have been him. Why did the civilians sleep in the rubble? You could assume that maybe the Armada blasted their homes, but there must have been somewhere else they could have gone than just sleeping in the ruins that the aliens said they were going to come back to to finish the job tomorrow morning. I, I would have gone somewhere else. So the rangers never really lost their powers or ability to morph, right? They could have morphed the whole time, right? And they're just kind of letting all the civilians worry and, and wonder if they're even still alive. But I guess then they got their second wind and morphed. But then you have all these legendary rangers. So did they or didn't they have their powers? 
I mean, I've been wondering that since Samurai Surprise, or maybe earlier. Could Jaden have morphed if he wanted to? Could Casey have morphed? I don't know, I, and I still don't know the answer to that. Had the Super Mega Force Rangers not morphed right at that very second, those people were done for. What about all the other legendary rangers that were out and about? Seems like Tommy would have at least charged them even if he couldn't morph. That's something Tommy would do, right? Troy and Orion very easily ran to Orion's ship and somehow made it right onto the Emperor's ship. It seemed like the Armada would have taken them down pretty quickly. I can't believe they were able to get all the way there, crash into the ship and not die, and get into the into the Emperor's ship to fight him. It was a cool scene though. I, I did like the battle with Red Ranger, Silver Ranger, and Emperor. It seemed like it needed slightly more epic music though. I'll come back to the music thing too. After Troy and Orion won, they used the galaxy gliders to escape from the, the burning ship and to glide to safety. So that was really cool and unexpected. So, all right, galaxy gliders. I was really happy to see that. In response to the millions of Exborgs that were gathering in the quarry that the Rangers were now in, how can we defeat an army this size? What happened to the Megaforce Swords? Were those all destroyed? Isn't Gosei Ultimate still perfectly operational? Isn't that their cave? Couldn't Gosei Ultimate have just kind of stepped on that army of Exborgs and been done with it? I think so. Of all of my Super Mega Force complaints, the shots of the legendary rangers appearing in the quarry on the different cliffs, I think that's probably some of my favorite footage of, of all time, I think. That was just really awesome. We're outnumbered. What are we going to do? Legendary rangers! Look, you guys, up there! They really did a fantastic job with all the teams appearing. I just love that. And the music when the rangers are kind of walking towards the camera, that was pretty epic. Really good job with that. So I'm sure that's going to be one of my top favorite Power Ranger moments, I guess, of any season. That was just really awesome. The teams appearing on the cliffs, that was done so well, I could almost swear that they just filmed it in Japan and, and superimposed the Megaforce Rangers in the middle of the quarry. It just looked so Sentai-ish, right? And that's a compliment. It really looked like Sentai footage. They've gotten really good at mashing it, but it really looks like Japan shot that stuff. And now to criticize one of my most favorite scenes, they did remove the Red Zeo Ranger and the Black Dino Thunder Ranger because Tommy was the Green Mighty Morphin. But when we see Mighty Morphin appear, there's no Green Ranger or White Ranger, but there is the Red Turbo Ranger. But Tommy was the Green Ranger and TJ was the Blue Space Ranger, so why were any of the Turbo Rangers minus Justin there? I don't know. I'm going to give the explanation that those are the Robot Rangers from Eltar, and there were some other issues as well with many other teams, actually. I'm not going to name them all, but Mystic Force was missing everybody but the main five Rangers. Three out of six Ninja Storm Rangers, even though the other three were present in the war. Alright, I'll stop there. You guys can comment your observations if you want to add to that. It's like they sort of made an attempt to have the continuity be good, but then sort of didn't go all the way with it. Megaforce opens with Troy having this Legend War dream, and it concludes with Troy saying, I knew it. I had a dream about this. So Gia turns to Troy and just kind of goes, kind of like, sure, whatever, Troy. And that was it. So who is Troy? How did Troy have this dream? He's just some guy that happened to have this dream and was also chosen to be the Red Ranger? No explanation. Zero. That needed something. Caron, Damon, Emily, Mike, they did not say a word. Cassie, however, spoke in the elevator rescue and in the Legend War. Why not just let her speak in the elevator and then give the line that she had to any of the other Silent Rangers? Not that we don't like Cassie, I'm just saying. You know, you flew them all the way to New Zealand to be in this war and then they don't get to say nothing. They did shoot some original Legend War footage, but it was like mostly just the Megaforce Rangers and Orion. I would like to have seen more of the other teams, not the same Japanese footage that we've been seeing since Troy's Dream in Episode 1 of Megaforce. I kind of wish the Legendary Battle could have been a lot longer and a lot more original. I wish SPD could have gone into swap mode. I wish we could have seen some of the old Battleizers. I'm sure a lot of the props don't exist anymore, but I don't know, maybe they could have recreated a few of them and actually the stock footage wouldn't have been in HD. Uh, that sucks. I feel like they could have done a lot more, and I feel like years ago they would have done a lot more and made it feel more like our Rangers. It felt like I was seeing more of the Sentai than the American, um, if that makes sense. Like, it didn't feel like those were the American teams up on the cliff. It felt like the American Rangers were in Japan looking at the Sentai Rangers. Does that make sense? The suits were recognizable, but it didn't feel like the characters we knew were actually inside them. 
I think that's the best I can explain it. They had the Titanium Ranger suit. They didn't have his visor. I don't know what that was about, but they had his suit. But zero fighting footage of Titanium Ranger. And then, after all of this Tommy stuff, he wasn't even in the war. No Tommy in the war. How, how did that happen? I mean, I'm also glad that Tommy wasn't, like, taking out all the exports by himself, but I would like to have seen some, some Tommy footage in the war, especially after all the hype, right? And it seems like with all the Rangers that came back for the cameos, both in the battle and, you know, a couple of tribute episodes, why couldn't they have done some ADR so they could have had some voices in the war? Oh, Robo Knight was back. I didn't think Robo Knight was coming back. Well, if he was back, then I guess they could have used his Lion Sword as well. Like, if Robo Knight was there, why why not just go to his lion zord and plow down the uh, the exporks and that would have been the end of it right so tommy and the rangers say goodbye after the battle and they glow and turn to sparkles and then leave the planet what were they were they ghosts were they just energy were they really those characters I, where did they come from where did they go now i want to talk about cotton eye joe but um <laughs> people are like what <laughs> <laughs> that needed some explanation. I'm not a writer, and I'm glad that I wasn't given the job to write like a season of Power Rangers, but had they said, Bruno, I want you to, to do this season, I probably still would have needed some help, but I think I could have at least written an outline. I think I might have started with this invasion. All the x are coming. And all these ships are coming from deep space, where, give them whatever background. And there's like this mass invasion all over Earth, and you could like see different cities and states and countries with like a little subtitle. And you see all like these recognizable monuments maybe being fired on, or maybe you can't do that because of certain events that really happened, I don't know, but... You know, somebody has to gather this ultimate force of rangers, which is every ranger ever. I don't know if it's Andros or Carter or some other ranger uh, or mentor or somebody, but all the rangers have to come together and fight in this epic battle. You know, you can kind of make it like it actually happened in Japan, where they have to kind of come together, focus all their energy, and there's this epic final wave that wipes out all the existing armada. So then, maybe Gosei is awakened, and all this energy, he's able to somehow gather, and like, you have all these keys in the cave, and, you know, the lights come on revealing the keys, and maybe they're all gray. And then as the power is coming into the command center, they all start to glow and, and take their color. And then somehow these morphers come to be that are able to use these keys. Something that Gosei and his mentor Zordon had been planning for in the event that such an invasion ever happened. That they would be able to, to reclaim this power and focus it into these keys and then into the morphers. And then that's given to this new team. And then from there, you have some cameos of the Rangers throughout the season and some better tribute episodes. It rarely felt like there was much going on. Like the Rangers would fight a little battle here and then back to having Froyo and it was no big deal. Just the biggest invasion the Earth has ever seen. It just needed a lot more. I'm sure for kids who are young and who've only been watching Power Rangers who don't know about Super Sentai, I'm sure this was really cool for them to see. For older fans, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are kind of disappointed. Just changing the music in The Legend War would have been just a huge improvement. I'm going to post a video on Facebook that you guys can go see. It's on our Facebook, MMPR Toys. I don't know why nobody follows us on Facebook, but link in the description of every video. Go check it out. I'll make sure it's up by the time this video is up. So you just go to Facebook and there's the most recent video. And just see the difference in The Legend War if they had used different music. I don't know that they could have gotten the rights to this particular song, even though this is the one I think they should have used. But even the theme song with the some Go Go Power Rangers remix, it just it wasn't the right music. It wasn't epic enough. Also, that track and many others are available on iTunes. Please support Ron and the music. It's really the most awesome music ever to drift for a sec. He redid all these tracks. They're fantastic. It's like the greatest music to work out to or to go for a long walk or something. It's just really awesome, energizing music. Go buy it. Support Ron. If I can link to it, I will in the description below. And at the very end, Troy lets go of his weapon. The weapon that was not used in the Legendary War and leaves it in the dirt. Seems like you could pick up with the next series. I don't think Dino Charge is the right series, but a different series where the, the lead villain finds this sword and like dismantles it and figures out ranger technology and, and draws their power kind of like from that. That just seems like a terrible thing to leave 
Maybe Gose was like, Troy, what is up with that? And, and teleports the sword back to the command center. All right, I think I might end here. There was a lot of other things I wanted to talk about, and I'll still probably come back to it later, but I think with like all the, the Sentai teams that were randomly showing up, I don't know what was up with that. I wish they could have been written in, you know, better into the Power Ranger universe. That could have been really cool. I have nothing against seeing old Sentai teams. I, I wish we could have seen them all and had a story that went along with it so people could learn about all the different Sentai teams. I love that, but they didn't do it in a way that was cool. It was just like, what is, who is this? What is this ranger? I don't know who this ranger is. They were just treated like any other. I mean, it could have been Mask Man, it could have been Mighty Morphin. It's all the same, right? Jet Man or RPM? Lost Galaxy or Live Man? What's the difference? I don't know. All right, I guess you guys can let me know your thoughts. You know, definitely some great things about Super Mega Force, but overall, somewhat disappointing. Oh, on Monday, November 24th, an extended version of the Super Mega Force finale will air 11 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. on Nicktoons. And Tuesday, November 25th, Nick.com and Nickelodeon app will also have it as well. And if you go into the description below the video, you will find a Dino Charge trailer link thanks to PR Samurai Cast. Alright, I'm just going to keep talking and I really need to wrap this up though. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos and I want to come back to this. Thank you guys for watching and good night.